and hello YouTube, GS Mount Smart here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at how to make some easy gold in Guild Wars 2, primarily through crafting, gathering, maybe you've got a ton of materials sitting in your bank storage, you don't know what to do with them, you got some currencies, all of that can be converted into gold, so we're going to show you 14 items that you can craft every day, some of them are time gated, and how that can turn into some easy gold. What's up guys, welcome back to another video for Gaming with GS, and if you're new to the channel, which most of you probably are, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the post notification bell so you can get notified for any new videos. We do lots of uh, Guild Wars 2 gaming videos here, gaming videos in general. Um, I encourage you to take a look at the backlog on the channel, lots of other videos on how to make gold. This is not the only one that I have, so you might find some useful things. Now for those of you who are returning of viewers, I know I've been gone. I probably won't be making a ton of videos. I just thought I'd hop on and make one quickly because I've been doing this a lot on Guild Wars 2. More on that towards the end of the video where I've been. I know most of you are here for the gold content, so let's jump right into it. So I've got 14 items to share with you today. These 14 items are, some of them are used for ascended legendary crafting. Some of them are used for guild hall upgrades. In fact, one of them is, and some of these are for Madri. Now I have done a couple of videos on a few of these items in the past, but they've just been like in the middle of the video and not explained very well. I have one video that pretty much covers an item completely. So I'll link any relevant videos in the card or description below. I've also ranked these from easy, medium, and hard. If you don't have a ton of crafting professions, this method does require you to have at least one crafting profession at 400. You'll get the most out of this if you have, say, the artificing or the tailoring or leatherworking um, or weaponsmithing, you know, the, the, the armoring or weapon... Uh, crafting professions at 400 crafting. This would uh, be really helpful because a lot of these do require to have high level in crafting. So we'll start with the easy uh, crafting uh, items first, um, which is the Bolt of Dan Mask, the Deldramore Steel Ingot, and the Spirit Wood Plank. Now these three items are used for ascended crafting. Uh, for the Bolt of Dan Mask, you need a bunch of different types of bolts. You need wool, cotton, linen, and those can be made with scraps. Um, and then the time gated item, which is one of the reasons why a lot of these items are so valuable on the trading post is because they each have a item that is behind a time gate, meaning you can only craft one per day, which is why these are good to craft um, once per day. You can craft one a day and make, make it part of your daily um, routine for getting gold. So for the Bolt of Dan Mask, it's the spool of silk weaving thread. You probably have a lot of scraps in your inventory, so you can probably make the bolt very easily. And for the uh, spool of silk weaving thread, all you need is 100 bolts of silk, which does require a lot of silk scraps, but those, we get tons of those. If you're level 80 and you're doing uh, all the meta events or just fighting or doing fractals, you'll get tons of silk scraps. So that shouldn't be a problem. One glob of ectoplasm and the spool of gossamer thread, which you can get from the uh, crafting master. So that's a pretty easy one to make. And you'll, it's an easy 3.5 gold. If you make uh, the spools of silk weaving thread every day, you can make one bolt of den mask. A similar story with the Deldramore steel ingot. You need a lot of the mithril. Mithril was so cheap on a trading post. We probably have tons of it in our in our bank. So as long as you're level 450 with the weaponsmith or the huntsman or the armor or the artificer, you can make the Deldramore steel ingot. And the only thing that you need for there is the lump of mithrilium. Now the lump of mithrilium is the once per day time gated item. But again, easy materials there. With the mithril, you need one glob of ectoplasm and, th and 10 thermocatalytic reagents, which you can get from the crafting profession master. And then lastly, the spirit wood planks. Similar story, all the wood that you've been gathering, it all goes towards this. You convert your wood into planks, and as long as you have 450 on huntsman, weaponsmithing, or artificer, you can go make a glob of elder spirit residue. Again, you gotta be 450. You need 50 elder wood planks, easy to make if you have a bunch of elder wood. If you do the farm that in Malcor's Leap, where there's a bunch of trees around there. Pretty easy to get a bunch of elder wood there. And again, the thermocatalytic reagent and one glob of ectoplasm. So the glob of elder spirit residue, lump of mithrilium, and spool of silk weaving thread, 
Those are the three time gated items. If you make those once a day, you can make the Bolt of Dan Mask, Delgin More Steel Ingot, and the Spirit Wood Plank. And each of those sell for about between 2.5 to 3.5 gold. Now the next one we have here is the Leyline Infused Tool. Now I'm not gonna go over this one too in depth because I do have a dedicated video for this item. Just know that it's used for guild hall upgrades. You do need to have quartz crystals and you do have to be Weaponsmith 400. This uh, recipe is automatically given to you once you reach level 400 the same with the last three recipes are automatically given to you you don't have to buy them the big item that you need here is quartz crystals to convert them into a charged quartz crystal so i'll have a link to the video in the card right here so if you want to go watch that video we go a bit more in depth on how to find quartz crystals and uh, how to make the item and the last two easy items that we have is a plate of meaty plant food and plate of piquant plant food these are probably the easiest to make out of the out of the six easy items that I have listed here because the items that are required for it, you probably have tons of them. For the pecan plant food, you need ghost peppers, saffron thread, and slab of red meat. All of those you can pretty much gather from around the world. And then foxfire clusters. The foxfire clusters are the only ones that you might not have a ton of. They are a rare drop from... Uh, chopping down trees but if you've been chopping down trees for a while you probably have some laying around and it's not like the recipe requires a ton of them either you just need four of these and then you can uh, make the uh, plant of pecan plant food now the only thing to mention here is that the recipe is not given to you when you get chef 400 you do have to buy this recipe from the vendor in dry top and it does cost geodes now it only costs like 35 40 geodes so if you do a few events in dry top you'll get plenty of these geodes and you can buy the recipe um, just participate in the events you'll get geodes if you participate in the events during the sandstorm you'll get more geodes so it shouldn't take you too long to get this recipe a similar story with the meaty plant food and that one arguably is even easier to make because you just need uh, incandescent dust large bone potent blood and venom sack and i've had tons of those in my bank you probably have tons of them too so go ahead and convert those into uh, some plant food and those also sell for about a quarter of a gold. It doesn't seem like a lot, but if you do it every day in four days, you basically have the same amount of gold you would have gotten for doing your dailies and the dailies are pretty easy to do. So always make sure you do those. So those are all the easy items that you can craft. If you were to craft all these easy items every day, that's an additional 12 gold. And the only real requirement here is that you have, um, I would probably say weaponsmithing, getting that to 400 would be good because that does take care of three of the items on the list. Chefing, getting that to 400 shouldn't take a whole ton of gold the spirit wood plank delgemore steel ingot and bolt of denmas do require to get to level 450 in crafting but as long as you have at least one of them in level 450 crafting then you should be able to craft uh, those ascended items but i say weaponsmithing is the best one to level up because um, three of the recipes require weaponsmithing. Next, we'll go into the medium difficulty items that you can make through crafting. Let's go ahead and start with the square of Vabian silk. This is used, again, for ascended crafting. Some of these items in the medium category here are used for some legendary component crafting, so they are valuable for legendary as well. Um, the only downside here is that the square of Vabian silk does require a spool of silk weaving thread, and if you've already made your bolt of Dan mask for the day, you probably don't have another one for the square of Vabian silk. If you were to ask me, should I should I craft the bolt of Dan mask or should I craft the square of Vabian silk? I'd probably say craft the bolt of Dan mask because it does sell for slightly more. But if you have an extra one laying around, maybe you forgot to craft one the previous day, a bolt of Dan mask, or you didn't have enough uh, scraps and you have two of them now, you could craft the square of Vabian silk or the bolt of Dan mask. Obviously, if you want to go as efficient as possible, I'd probably just craft a bunch of bolt of Dan mask because they do sell for a little more. I do say this one is medium difficulty because it does require tailoring uh, armor smith or leather worker to be 500. So if you're if you don't have extras laying around, then I'd probably just worry about doing the bolt of dam mask. It's only level 450 required, and it obviously sells for more anyway. The other issue with these items I'm going to cover now are that you have to buy them from either PvP or Fractals with uh, League tickets or with Fractal Relics. I think it's the pristine version too. If you have some pristine Fractal Relics laying around, then I would invest those into these recipe books and you can get them from Bling9009. It costs about 10 pristine Fractal Relics and that's how you'd get the Square of Vabian Silk and the next three items that I'm going to cover as well. So as I said previously, similar story with the composite wood board and the 
carbonized mithrilium ingot. They do require the glob of elder spirit residue, which if you haven't already used it for the spirit wood plank, I'd probably use it for the spirit wood plank because it does generally sell for a lot more. Spirit wood plank sells for about 2.5 gold, while the composite wood board sells for about one gold. Again, if you have extra laying around, then you can craft both of those on the same day. But chances are you don't have a bunch of globs of elder spirit residue laying around. Um, and if you do, probably want to make the spirit wood plank anyway since it sells for more but it is an option if you wanted to craft it and similar story with the carbonized mithrilium ingot now the only advantage with the carbonized mithrilium ingot is that you can craft this with any profession at 500 so if you didn't use the lump of mithrilium because you didn't have uh weaponsmithing or armor artificing or huntsman at 450 as long as you have maybe tailoring at 450, you could still make the lump of mithrilium and make the carbonized mithrilium ingot. So if you couldn't make the Delgamore steel ingot, you can make this. And they do sell for about the same. So if you don't feel like crafting up all these crafting professions and say you just have like tailoring at 500, at least you can make the carbonized mithrilium ingot because you wouldn't have made the Delgamore steel ingot that day anyway. Next, we have the blended leather sheet. Again, used for ascended crafting and some legendary collections. Now for this one, you need a spool of thick Elonian cord. And the other item that's in the medium category here is the Elonian leather square, which also requires a spool of thick Elonian cord. Um, the only advantage with the blended leather sheet that again, you can have any crafting profession aside from, I believe it's chef and jeweler, but you have to have like one of the main uh, crafting professions that craft armor or weapons. If you have um, it at 500, then you could craft this you could craft the blended leather sheet. Again, you have to get the recipe from PVP or fractals, but that would sell for about 3.5 gold. If you do happen to have more crafting professions at 450 or 500, then I'd probably opt for using your spool of thick Elonian cord for the Elonian leather square, because the Elonian leather square does sell for 4.5 gold, which is more than the blended leather sheet, which on average sells for about 3.5 gold. So an easier barrier of entry for the blended leather sheet, as long as you have any of the armor or weapon crafting professions at 500. But if you have tailoring or artificing or leatherworking or huntsman, then you could craft the Elonian Leather Square. It just kind of depends on what you, what crafting professions you have. The other advantage is that the Elonian Leather Square, you get that recipe automatically when you hit level 450, while the blended leather sheet, you have to be level 500 and then you also have to buy the recipe from PVP or Fractals. So overall, I think the Alonia Leather Square is the better bet, but you do have the option for the blended leather sheet as well. If you happen to only have leveled up weapon, weapon smithing to 500, because I do know previously I said that weapon smithing is probably the best bet for the easy category. So if you've just leveled up weapon smithing, then you could use the thick Elonian cord for the blended leather sheet. The last item in the medium category is the clay pot. Now, now the reason why this is a medium item in difficulty is because you do require map currency. You do require about 200 geodes or around that number to get the 25 brick clays. The other items aren't really that problematic. You also have to buy the recipe for this one on dry top, but the other ingredients aren't that difficult to get. Five globs of ectoplasm, we probably have a ton of those. Pile of incandescent dust, you probably have a ton of those. And then the 25 thermocatalytic reagents, which you can buy from the crafting master. So the only real problem here is the 25 bricks of clay. So if you feel like farming dry top, if you have a lot of geodes as the map currency, or if you don't mind farming the map for those 25 brick clays, then you could craft your daily clay pot. It does sell for a good amount, about six gold on average, so the time investment might be worth it. But if you don't like dry top, and I don't blame you if you don't, and you don't wanna farm for the currency, um, then this probably wouldn't be one for you. And that's the reason why I do have it listed as medium because it, does, it would require you to do some farming for the currency if you don't already have a ton of it. And it's not like you can get geodes from a bunch of different maps as you could with like mithril or scraps or leather, which you get from every single map. And the last two items we have on this list are in the hard category. And the reason why I say they're hard is just because of the materials that are required. It's the grow lamp and the heat stone. Now these two items you gotta get from dry top again. So there is an initial cost of some geodes. Let's start with the grow lamp though. You gotta be level 400 jeweler and every other 
uh, crafting profession that we've covered so far in this list of items to craft, jeweler hasn't been needed. So that's another reason why it's kind of in the heart. It's a bit more difficult of a barrier of entry. Maybe you don't have jeweler at 400. Not only that, but you do need lots of quartz crystals. And I mean lots of them um, because you have to convert 25 quartz crystals. So that's 250 quartz crystals to make to make 10 charged quartz crystals. And on top of that, you still need a bunch of oracalum to make the oracalum settings. The watchworks bracket if you have the uh, node in your home instance, you probably have a ton of those. They aren't that expensive on a trading post, but you need a lot of them, so the cost might stack up. And then the sunstone lumps, um, you do get those from mining around the world, but they could be rare to find. I didn't have a ton of them in my bank, so you might not have a ton of them. Um, so unless you've been playing the game a lot and you have a ton of these charged quartz crystals, you've, if you've been converting them on the fly, if you've been collecting a lot of these resources, then the grow lamp might be good for you because it does sell for a good 23 and a half gold on average. And if you craft one of those every day, that's a ton of gold there. This one is used for Madri, the same way the clay pot is used, and Madri is um, an ascended back piece that a lot of people want to create because it also eats the bloodstone dust and it gives you items back. Also, if you're looking for routes on where to get some good orcalum ore, we do a video on the best ways to get orcalum ore. The video is a little old, but I think a lot of the routes do still work. So I'll leave a card on screen now and description so you can check that out. And one thing I almost forgot to mention in this video is that charged quartz crystals, you can only convert 25 regular quartz crystals into a charge quartz crystal per day. So one charge quartz crystal per day. So to make 25 of them, it's gonna take you 25 days, which is why this item is a bit more difficult to craft. Yes, it's very profitable. If you log on every day and convert your 25 quartz crystals, you can go make a huge amount of profit, but it does require a lot of consistency and for you to continue to log on and get that charged quartz crystal. And lastly, we have the heat stone, again, in the hard category, uh, primarily because you need lodestones and lodestones are expensive. Now you can promote the lower tier lodestones, which are like the cores, you can promote them into the actual lodestones. So that would be an option, but chances are you don't have a ton of these. So if you don't have a ton of lodestones, you probably don't have a ton of cores. And if you don't want to do the material promotion, which is an extra step, then it probably wouldn't be worth it. The item does sell for 13 gold so you can craft one a day sells for 13 gold it's a good amount of money but again very heavily dependent on whether you have all these lodestones you need 10 molten lodestone 10 onyx lodestones and then a lesser vision crystal the lesser vision crystal isn't really the problem because you probably have tons of bloodstone dust to make the bloodstone brick you probably have tons of dragonite ore to make the dragonite ingot and you have imperial fragments to make the imperial star the auger stone you can just get from the lady in front of the mystic forge i do cover the material promotion method a bit in a previous uh, gold trick video so i have a card on screen for that now as well as in the description so in total if you were to craft all these items and again it is dependent on whether you have uh two globs of elder spirit residue for the two items listed on this list but if you were to craft all these you would make about 70 gold not including the distinction that um if you were to use your spool of silk weaving thread to make the bolt of den mask it is more profitable than if you were to use it for the square of vabian silk so if you had two spools of silk weaving thread i probably Probably would make the bolt of Dan mask because it is a higher cost so you'd probably make more than 70 gold uh, per day but most of you are probably not going to have um, two of those time gated items because that's one of the reasons why these items are so expensive because a lot of people don't have them and they are in demand so realistically if you just wanted to do the easy items on this list you can make an additional 12 gold per day and i think that's the big takeaway here if you do the easy items on top of the two gold that you get from your dailies another 12 gold that's 14 gold a day and even if you only wanted to do the weapon smithing ones that's 3.5 2.5 and 2 that's an extra eight gold a day so i do still think weapon smithing is the most profitable crafting class at least considering this list 
Um, but those are just 14 items that I've researched and picked out. So if you happen to know additional items, leave them in the comments down below because I'm sure a lot of people are going to go down there and read the comments. So if you happen to have some other items that I didn't cover, that would be helpful for the community here. And that pretty much covers the video. Now, as I've mentioned at the start of the video, I just sort of wanted to get on here and make this video. I know I've been absent for <laughs> several years now. Um, for those of you who don't know, though, if you go to the channel page and you hit the community tab on the channel page, I did post an update um, on the community tab, maybe close to about a year ago now, or maybe a little less than that, that I sort of explained why I haven't been making any videos. So I do encourage you, if you're curious to go and read my post on the community tab. Some of you did leave comments. I've just really been busy with a bunch of other things. I'm still playing Guild Wars 2. I still am following Guild Wars 2, excited for the end of Dragon's expansion. Um, yeah, I just sort of was watching one of my older videos this morning and I was seeing that a bunch of people are still commenting and I thought, well, you know, I've been doing some of this crafting every day. Um, I know I've made a couple of videos in the past. You know, I did one about the clay pot before. I did one about the lay down infused tool. But I was thinking, well, you know, what other crafting items do I usually craft on a daily basis that people could use to make more gold? And I thought about this idea and I just compiled the list together and decided to make a video for you guys. Thought it might be really helpful. And, you know, I just was feeling like making a video. Um, I had some extra time today, thought I'd do it. And I know some of you have been wondering where I've been, been wanting to hear my voice again, so here I am. Um, I don't know how many times I'm gonna do this type of thing. You know, on my tutorials channel, I did upload uh, a couple of videos in the past six-ish months. I just uploaded one, I think last week. So it's just sort of when I feel like uploading a video, I'll upload a video. If I have something to talk about, if I have something to say, maybe I'll upload a video. Um, I don't know how the following is on the channel anymore. And it's not really at the top of my mind, really. I'm just sort of creating a video when I can or when I feel like it. And then, you know, if it's helpful, great. That's all I'm really here to do is try to help people in Guild Wars 2 or try to help people with uh, the videos that I make. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, use the comment section down below to help some other people because I know I probably didn't cover everything or maybe I've missed some items. And make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you haven't so you can catch any other videos if I happen to upload anymore. And I hope you found the video helpful. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.